What's up coaches? Hope you guys are doing well. Here's our uh, uh, video for Wednesday. So you guys know the scoop, but the warm up, uh, make sure you explain the primary movement, the RDL, really dig into its intent. Um, noting that the RDL is not about load, but it's about connecting to the muscles in the posterior. Um, it's about building the structure of the backside of the athlete. Um, and what we're really focusing on here is um, the range of motion that's specific to the athlete as an individual, meaning that for most, touching the ground isn't necessary. Once they get to that spot where they reach really good tension in the hamstrings and they still have a really strong flat back, that's where we want to keep them. Uh, we're not trying to achieve a certain range of motion. It's going to be very uh, individual specific. All right. So um, moving through, talk about the um, what each track is going to be doing and how they're going to be using that particular movement. And then uh, build in those slow focused inchworms. When I say slow focus, what I'm referring to is once they walk out and establish the push up position, we really want to walk back very, very slowly, emphasizing keeping the heels down and actively stretching that posterior, um, preparing it for the loading of the RDL to come. And then jump rope singles um, for 30 repetitions. Now, people can do line jumps if they need to if jump rope is tough, right? So uh, moving through, we've got um, uh, our final power day of the week every two minutes for seven cycles. Uh, we're starting with a very short interval of an L-sit. So check out the L-sit progressions. It should be the toughest um, movement within that progression in the video that can be held for 10 seconds unbroken. All right, the logistics of the L-sit. What you wanna do is, um, if you know you're gonna have some big groups, set up your boxes beforehand in a line of boxes that people can go to that station to do their L-sit and then rotate out of that station. So you put you know, 10, 12 boxes in a row in a line um, at some place in the confines of the gym, and then you can put a huge group starting on the L-sit um, and still kind of distancing away from one another on both sides of the boxes, so on. So use that line of boxes for the L-sits. Now, um, the RDLs, uh, the set of four, the set of sixes for the other two groups, um, note that we're at the same load as last week or maybe going up just a little bit, two and a half to 10 pounds. Uh, keeping in mind range of motion um, is different for everyone and keeping in mind we're working on a structure-based movement, not worrying about the load. Then our final movement, we have six banded plank rows. I've got a video link in there for you on the banded plank rows. Those need to be tough. The way you make those tough is by coming out further from the cage. Uh, these can be tough on the elbows. Feel free to put ab mats underneath the elbows. Um, these have been known to shred elbows, um, put like scabs and stuff on, rub rashes. So use those to your advantage if, if you need to um, for people that have sensitive skin. All right. Um, <clears throat> This would be um, ideally the same as kind of the power clean setup where we're done in that minute 10 to minute 15 time range and then uh, we'll have the remainder of that um, cycle for rest. Continue to emphasize, all right, you've got to say this at some point during the class, that these are small sets of perfect practice. And these are small sets of perfect practice. And the only way people are going to really make progress going into the second half of the horsepower cycle is if they grasp that concept. Small sets of perfect practice. All right. Um, we're going into the workout. So we have a nine minute AMRAP here. Um, this is a triplet, moderate time domain. Um, you're going to be dealing with high heart rate, lots of muscle stamina, specifically from the shoulders with the a little bit bigger sets, the 90, the 30, the 15. Um, we're going to have to manage those with strategic breaks and just have a smart overall approach to the scaling of the movements and the pacing of the movements. Based on the time component and the reps and sets, our goal should be to scale to get two plus rounds. Our double unders here, we want something that's 90 seconds or less, so a little bit longer interval of jump rope. We should be considering splitting here. Um, it should be tough enough where we're not able to do this unbroken. Uh, maybe your jump rope ninjas will do that, but most people should consider splitting here for strategic purposes, even doing singles. 
dumbbells shoulder to overhead. So we've got um, a goal of doing half on one side, half on the other. So 30, 15 on the right, 15 on the left. Uh, the goal here is to keep the heart rate high, a moderate load um, at best. We want a short, powerful dip and then driving to a one second pause at the top. Ideally, this is one to two sets per arm, 30 unbroken when fresh. This should keep the workout moving. This is not about strength, but more about moving that load through space, maintaining the high heart rate. The total bar are gonna be a test today. It's a big set, unbroken is definitely not needed. People can chip away with great quality. Um, any of the normal toaster bar are great. Um, and people can spend a little bit more time here and challenge themselves with this as long as the movement is repeatable uh, and done with great quality. Primer, super important here. You wanna see the jump rope, the shoulder overhead, the toaster bar. You wanna see all that in action. Um, Notes and logistics, logistics on the strength. We, we want to continue to do the half and half. If you have a class of any particular size, eight to 10 or more, go ahead and have half your class start at zero and then half your class start at one. That'll free up space on the L sits. Uh, that'll free up space uh, with the barbells and the RDLs. So go ahead and make sure that you accomplish the zero and one spitting the class. Logistics for the workout should be good with just a jump rope and a single dumbbell, um, rig space, uh, even a bigger group we should be able to run one heat with no problem. All right. Feedback on, on this workout, we're going into the second half of Horsepower starting on Thursday. All right. As always, your feedback is important. Right? Let me know if you guys have any or need anything from me. See y'all.